Kwa sasa hapa ndiyo kuna itangwa chemba Zo mafaiku ya metogolea hapa Mali kuna ima bati na kimari Sasa mwambie mkwa na ye mwambie sasa kutukana na chifu Hazi ni kitu nasema ya kwa mbala kwa hiyo Ni natokia wapi Ni natokia wapi Rafa mkato kusaiti Mwana wakubo wameenda Wamepita hivu Wakipata tena ya kimari kumekanyeza kwa mbomolewa Apa tu? Apa tu? Apa tu? Apa tu? Apa Kenya's population continues to grow with the urban areas accommodating a significant number of people. By 2050, the urban population alone is estimated to reach 44 million people. That will be close to half of Kenya's total population. The, 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 the perception being that in urban areas you will get a better quality of life, you have access to more opportunities, and I use the word perceptions very deliberately. Because often, sometimes there are better opportunities in terms of incomes, cost of living is lower in rural areas. And not all rural areas are very, very bad. So you have this constant supply of people coming in who have no incomes. They are coming to look for incomes. And where do they land? They land in the cheapest of places. Places where, which are not regulated. Nobody knows where you live. Uh, and um, and, and so, so, so there's a whole demand challenge. Every single day, the people of Nairobi require 850 million liters of water, but get 525.6 million liters per day. You need to bridge that gap. In fact, you'll be shocked, uh, Polycap. 70% of the people you're talking about, the ones you didn't know carry water in Mutungi, 70% of them, of Nairobians, have never had a shower from the top. They, they bathe bottom up, you know, like with the bucket. <laughs> bottom up is how many of us shower in this city. We want to give our people dignity. There is no dignity when women are scrambling outside these, you know, uh, boreholes that have been created in the water sources every day for water. Article 43 of the Kenyan Constitution acknowledges access to clean and safe water in adequate quantities as a basic human right. But Nairobi isn't just grappling with water scarcity. There is also an imbalance in its distribution. In the slums, most of the people buy water in 20 liter jerry cans from cartels or private vendors. Sasa hawa watu wenye makatels walitoa mpaka zile pipe za kitambo zenye kanjo walikuwa meleta zilikuwa pipe ambazo zimesetua vizuri hazikuwa pipe za shida hazikuwa pipe na joints sasa hizi zao ziko na joints from here to their joint from there to their joint kabla maji fike mahali penye huyo mtu anataka kuweka joints ni kama 50 20 20 na kufanya na shilingi nne kufanya shilingi nne yani 8 bob sawa ukienda trip ya pili ukuje utakuwa chilia mtu ngi mbili mbili hizo utalipa ukiruta na la pingine utakuwa mtu zingine mbili hivyo 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 sasa electricity on the other hand is rigged and supplied by cartels while other people legally buy power and then distribute it to their neighbors at a fee and though most of these connections are far below the safety standards it costs residents between 200 to 400 shillings per month. Mm -hmm. So what wanakimbilia 
One of the challenges across Nairobi's informal settlements is the safe delivery of these essential utilities while minimizing on losses incurred through pilferage by local cartels. These illegal connections for customers are very expensive because uh, you find that a customer using one bulb is being charged, charged three, four hundred shillings. While uh, that one bulb, bulb uh, if you are buying power from Kenya Power, in a month you cannot spend more than uh, 50 shillings because uh, if it's an unit saving bulb of 50 or 5 watts, uh, consuming more than 50 shillings in a month is, uh, is, uh, is, is not possible. So we, we are working with them, removing those illegal connections and uh, encouraging uh, people in the formal settlement to, to get connected to, 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 to Kenya Power directly. It is cheaper. It's safer, it's better for them. Kenya Power and the residents are at loggerheads. In spaces like that, like, like those, chaos thrive. Kenya Power guys cannot go to some of those places with their trucks to try and disconnect. And even if they go and disconnect in the morning, by evening the connections are back. I think as we move into this um, season of really fiscal austerity and um, you know indebtedness uh, as an economy, uh, we're going to see a lot more of what we could call distress crimes and you know illegal tapping of electricity, like for example petty uh, theft, is a distress crime. It's really a crime of poor people trying to balance their budgets um, and finding it's really difficult, and therefore they start cutting corners. Poverty. Poor governance and the increasingly alarming inequalities in the urban ghettos have not only made legal and safe connections of water and power a nightmare, they have also resulted in ruinous social and economic consequences. You can imagine that um, even from an accounting perspective, um, Kenya Power will lose billions of shillings every year. It's a cautionary assessment uh, is uh, throwing us to about 70, 80 million shillings worth of loss in this site alone. Kenya Power is losing over 200 million shillings every month in Central Rift due to illegal connections and vandalism of transformers and conductors. Universal access to electricity is a fundamental necessity. But vandalism, tampering with electricity meters, the distribution of illicit power and the lack of payment for power consumed denies Kenya Power the much needed revenue. In the form of settlement, the kind of vandalism we get is for, we, they vandalize our wires, split them into small pieces to extend their legal uh, connections. Uh, but when, when we get out of the informal settlement now to, to the very urban areas, where, 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 like Machakos, Kajado, Moranga, Nakuru, Ikeambu. Now we now get uh, the, 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 now the bigger challenge of vandalism. Uh, the cost of the, the cost of a sm the smallest transformer is about half a million Kenya shillings, and when one transformer is vandalized, the loss is big. You remember, transformer is the single most expensive item in our network. If we look at the number of transformers that we have lost through vandalism, we look at uh, the loss of, of business, we also look at uh, the, 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 the challenges we have in the informal settlement, it amounts to about a billion Kenya shillings. As the power utility company continues to incur technical and commercial losses, the cost, quality and reliability of power supply to consumers is highly compromised. There are too many things in electricity components that consumers are not aware of and it has been made so intentionally so that people can take advantage of that billing. People, there is nobody else who can be paying for those losses. There is only one source of money and that is the consumer. Kenya Power Lighting Company has dismantled three power transformers in Kwanjenga. We find ourselves at war with, uh, with, with customers uh, especially the ones who are connected to those illegal lines because uh, they think we are seen as a wrong guy. 
in that space. But while we are trying to protect them, while we are trying to ensure that uh, they are safe, because uh, most of the connections, if you go to the informal settlement, they are very dangerous. Like many informal settlements, Madare, Kenya's second largest slum, has had its fair share of struggles with access to basic needs such as water, electricity, waste disposal, among others. This struggle has often led to what I can call as survival tactics. For instance, electricity. This particular area is Madare, Kosovo. It may look like everything is fine from here, but it really isn't. The residents here have not had electricity for nine months and counting. Sababu kuna hii ya fobi, kuna hii ya kitadhuru, kuna hii ya hii saidi ya uku kwetu. Sasa walibeba tatu. Hii, na ingine kwa pale chini? Kuna hii, kuna ingine ilikuwa pale chini? Hmm. Sasa hii ingine ni ya uku. Hiyo kijiji ingine, unajua vijiji ni tatu hapa. Due to the extensive use of illegal connections, Kenya Power disconnected the electricity supply by removing some of their distribution transformers in the area. Agnes, a resident of Kosovo, is one of the many people here whose life and business have been gravely affected by the power loss. Agnes used to own a salon but had to close down as she could no longer afford the rent and the other expenses that came with it. Kama kama uko na stima ukiwa na broad dry, ukifanya broad dry ulikuwa unapata kama ni 2000. Kusonga unaweza pata dhau. Tuseme kwa siku unaweza toka na ngiri tatu. Lakini sasa stima ikikosekana unaweza kaa tu kwa wiki unaweza pata kasoma moja ama ukose na ukaa hivyo. Sasa nikipata kasoma kama huyu inabidi sasa nimsongee hapa kwa mla kwa mlango maana yake siwezi enda kuchukua nyumba ya mtu na sina pesa kwenda maana yake sasa stima hakuna. For close to a year residents of Kosovo have endured immeasurable loss. Sasa hii customer hawakunywi soda vile walikuwa wanakunywa uh, kwa sababu wana takanga zikuwa baliti. Mm, saa hii uh, 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 natumia sora. Ime affect income yangu sana. Kabla stima iende, kazi ilikuwa nzuri. Mapato ilikuwa juu kidogo. Tangu ipote, customer hakuna. Mapato saa hii iko chini, kazi iko chini kabisa. Kuchemusha maji, kuchemusha sawa, sawa. Sasa customer vile maji ni baridi wanaogopa kuogea maji baridi. Sasa hawakuji kwa wingi. Hata kwa maplot ndani giza iko mingi. Pale ndani watoto wanaingia na kuna giza. Ni rahisi hata mtoto ku, ku, kuanguka kwa stairs. Sasa hata kazi tunafunga mapema kuliko kawaida. Others like Benedicta, a landlady, have been left with empty houses as most of the tenants move to other areas in search of power. secondary, <laughs> mahitaji zingine na zitaka sasa siwezi nizimerudisha mambo yangu chini kabisa wizi na ndio hiyo wa ku break nyumba na break wakiingia huko to corridors kuna wale wakipita na kasimu na nyang'anya na uwezi jua jua kuna giza electricity is an enabler without electricity without this without stima we can't do very much think of it if the whole country went dark today who would suffer and i'm not just talking about the big industries every single person from charging your phone to even having that naked bulb at night so that a child can do homework because it's also security a dark space is dangerous especially for women actually it's dangerous for all people that's why part of public planning would mean that you have footpaths you have street lights so that you know so it's it's also in high levels of insecurity that will drive me to say actually i prefer to have stima than no stima at all so that i can see what is happening 
According to the Energy Act 2019, illegal connection and electricity theft attracts a fine of 1 million shillings or one year imprisonment or both, and the illegal power connection is disconnected. Vandalism, theft and damage of streetlights and power installations will attract a minimum fine of 5 million shillings or a minimum jail term of five years or both if convicted. Breaking or tampering with electricity meters and seals will see an offender serving a two-year jail term or paying a fine of 50,000 shillings or both. One thing we are happy about now is that uh, for the first time, the county government of Nairobi has come on board. We've been working with the national administration officers, uh, but we've not collaborated well with the county government. So we believe now as we work together, we are likely to move faster to resolve some of the issues that we have had uh, uh, as far as supplying the informal settlement is concerned. <laughs> The informal settlements have become a battleground between the utility firms and the cartels. After three years of investigations and analyzing over 70 hours of footage of these illegal operations, it's clear that there is a major obstacle as far as provision of these basic necessities is concerned. But who should take responsibility for this mess? This, this is just a, a collection of a few of what we, we managed to get on the ground. So as you watch it, I just want to... to Madare and Kibera mostly. disconnect uh, You were asking why sometimes a decision to remove a transformer is rigid. That is what happens. When, uh, when, uh, when uh, you see that kind of uh, connections which are endangering people's lives, we make those kind of decisions to remove that transformer so that uh, the people are safe even as we come up with ways of connecting those areas. The issue of illegal connections is quite a big problem and it has been reported over and over again. I just want to find out, does KPLC know who these cartels are? Uh, we, we don't know who they are. And why we don't know uh, as KPLC is because the informal settlement is another social setup where if operating professionally the way we operate, we may not be able to penetrate and get that information. Uh, in the informal settlement, I wouldn't say that Kenya Power employed people and trained them. But the contractors who were doing connection in the informal settlements, they used the locals. And that's where the know-how, they received that know-how. I have heard people talking about cartels of water. When there is a scarcity of commodity, cartels must arise. Okay. And uh, when we talk about cartels of water in Nairobi, I've never seen any water leaving Nairobi to Nakuru or being taken to Kisumu. The water is consumed within uh, the city. But we don't still meet the, the demand. So what is supposed to happen is the development of more water sources. You have enough water. So if you have enough water, nobody will be uh, competing for that commodity. According to the Water Act 2016, a person who commits an offence under the Act or under any regulations made under the Act is liable to a fine not exceeding 1 million shillings or imprisonment for a term not exceeding 
two years or both. And everything is about getting by. And because of that desperation, you'll do anything to try and make ends meet, to try at least and have electricity in your shack, to try and have water uh, in your shack, to try and eat a meal and not continue with, you know, with the kind of um, suffering you imagine you'd be going through if you didn't have an opportunity. Cartels are a lazy word. It's a word used by lazy leaders who fail to master the courage and the guts and the resilience to deal with corruption. That is what cartels are. The first way not to be, uh, you know, uh, to have cartels in Nairobi is to refuse to be part of that system. Like in Kamon or Go Pataways, you are saying, Makesha Kikutisha Utajuzulu Tena. We cannot have that in Nairobi. Like we just need to set systems that actually remove the place they are playing. I intend to go further, engage the service, have a discussion with the service commanders so that we can have a reward, a reward the mechanism to the members of the public. So that any member of the public is out there, he captures a police officer receiving even a cent. That evidence is presented to us. Then there is a reward to that member of the public. As the culture of corruption in Kenya continues to grow, most anti-corruption initiatives fail or register limited success, especially because there are people who benefit from it and the lack of capacity and will from institutions of power in dealing with it. <laughs> There are allegations that, you know, Kenya Power is part of the problem, that we have Kenya Power staff, some of them also involved in the illegal business. Um, how, what would be your response to that? When Kenya Power is employing, it employs across the board. It is possible to have uh, such scenario. Every year we lose a number of employees after confirmation that they have been involved in illegal activities and we have had to separate with a number of them. So uh, when you tell me that some of these activities KPLC employees are, are involved, I cannot deny. But any person, be they a Kenya Power employee, be they from out there, Wherever there is evidence that they have been involved in an illegal activity, decisive actions are taken against them. If we knew we wouldn't be able to fight it, and we have been fighting it uh, the best way we can, by ensuring the informal settlement as water, sure we have police. And in fact, even when you are coming in, you saw APs. We work with the police very closely to curtail uh, those kind of menaces or those kind of uh, malpractices in the systems. We arrest and take them to the city magistrate's court and uh, we apply the Water Act, which has uh, penalties on such illegalities. Although there have been efforts to curb the illegal connection straight, so many people are still living in dangerous conditions prone to fire outbreaks, electrocutions, loss of life, livelihoods, and property. But who protects these consumers? Who bears the cost of these losses? Normally what happens is that uh, when we are looking at it from the legal perspective, Kenya Power Responsibility ends at the meter. Then after the meter, it's the responsibility of the customer. We take responsibility uh, because uh, we are socially responsible. But uh, when it comes to the legal, on the legal aspect, the person who did that extension is legally responsible. And in most cases, they are arrested and taken to court, especially where there is lost, loss of life and loss of property. Where Kenya Power is responsible, our operations are insured, and the insurance kicks in. Where it is somebody else who is legally responsible, uh, they, 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 it is handled differently where Kenya Power is not.
I think what we need to see is a lot more emphasis on what you call petty corruption. Um, but it's that petty corruption that actually makes the difference between you know, people having electricity or not, or having water or not, um, and ensuring that you don't have a situation where you have deliberate shutoffs of electricity, uh, water, just so that we can create a private uh, solution that is actually uh, embedded with the cartels um, so that they can do this. As Kenya's capital city, Nairobi faces rapid urbanization, the gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen. I don't think the biggest problem for majority of people living in informal areas is perhaps housing per se, it's income. Because you see, income, incomes give you opportunities, gives you possibilities. Si tu nauna garaifu ya manyu, upade ya nyu baraifu yiko sawa. Rakini upade ya uhasuli, jyo inakuwa gatabu, inakuwa gana matatizo. So, saazigine umeeda, uhasu, unarudi minyubani bila kitu. Utaeda uhasu, wapate, umerudi nyubani bila kitu. Zahiyo unategemewa na watoto, Uncontrolled social and economic disparities coupled with poor governance have obscured major improvements in the delivery of critical services, as in the case of informal settlements. This further complicates efforts put in place to achieve Kenya's Vision 2030. When you look at Nairobi and you see that uh, we, we lose about 18%, like the last financial year in Nairobi, we lost 18.3% uh, of the power that is dispatched within Nairobi. And that's quite something. And therefore, it is important for the sustainability of KPLC and the sector, given that uh, whatever money Kenya Power collects we collect on the behalf of the sector. And therefore, uh, for the sustain, sustain, financial sustainability of KPLC is very critical. If we were able, just around this electricity cycle, to end corruption, and so that at the generation level, at the transmission level, at the sale and distribution level, and also at the regulatory level, they know that we are watching them, and we will take them to court, and there will be consequences, then maybe, maybe we will have begun to turn this country around. For me, I think there are two big things that need to be done. One is that you need to decentralize cities so that then you don't have everybody coming to Nairobi. Then the rest has to be a process where you know, government puts in a very hard, uh, firm, firm, firm hand so that then the slum upgrading, first of all, targets and benefits the right people uh, in, 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 in that way and that there are alternatives. I think it has to be a very inclusive and alternative providing uh, process. As one of Africa's emerging economies, Kenya presents countless opportunities. But if the gap continues to grow between the demand and supply of essential urban services, then the country is exposed to lasting negative social and economic implications and consequences. So predictably, if Kenya continues on this trajectory of you know, extreme inequalities, um, gross corruption, and um, a really a society in which there's not just one Kenya, there are many Kenyans, then we are looking at a Brazil. We are looking at an India. These are countries in which the life experiences of their nationals are just so different depending on how close they are to power and privilege, right? Um, and the danger of those societies is those societies are not safe societies for many people. That's why it is so important for us um, to just think about, you know, what is the um, vision of this society we created in 2010 that we built the constitution around and really fight for that society, you know? Because if we don't, um, my sense is that the future is predictable. Um, for those people living in the urban um, informal settlements, for them it gets much more desperate. To realize the Sustainable Development Goal 11, to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable, under the 2030 agenda, it would take a collaborative effort between the national and county governments, among other actors. I William Samoei Ruto. On 13 September 2022, William Ruto was sworn in as the fifth president of Kenya a week after the Supreme Court dismissed the petitions challenging his win. And that I will protect and uphold 
and uphold the sovereignty, the sovereignty. The Hustlers, or the bottom-up economic framework, was the philosophy behind his 2022 presidential campaign dedicated to promoting and empowering those at the bottom of the wealth pyramid. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, things may come to those who wait, but only things left behind by those who hustle. It is time to bolster the resilience of our nations, to mainstream these millions through deliberate strategies and efforts for economic inclusion by building back better from the bottom up. Building back better from the bottom upwards is essentially about including the marginalized working maturity in the economic mainstream. The model generated hope for some and received criticism from others. And as he assumed office, he also took over a country struggling with a rising debt, corruption, high unemployment rates, a surge in food and fuel prices, among other challenges. Will his government achieve its promises to the people of Kenya? Only time will tell. But for now... Again, as Kenyans, we need to rise to the point where we are not afraid anymore. And we say, actually, we need water. We need to open our taps and water comes out. We need to switch on our lights and this is a legal paid for electricity connection that is affordable. We have to move away from that fear. And it is fear, it's governance by fear. People keep quiet because they're afraid of reprisals and the accountability question can never be dealt with if we are fearful. Hi, my name is Joy Kirigia. I am a producer and reporter at Africa Uncensored. Thank you for watching this video to this point and for being our number one supporter. We value you. To maintain our independence and continue to bring you in-depth stories, we need your financial support. We are requesting that you become a member of our channel or a Patreon on Patreon right now. The link with the instructions is on the screen and the description below. Alternatively, you can send us an m directly using the instructions below. Thank you.